Hello Grinder School, in this video I am going to review a 25NL 6 max session that I played last week I think. Uh, I'm going to go over my thought process for every hand that I play. I'm going to explain as much as possible what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. I did this previous for previously for a 10 nl video and I got some positive comments on that so I thought let's do another reviews uh, video and this time make it at 25 nl so without any further ado let's get the video rolling and I'll comment on all the plays that I uh, make in the first hand in the top left we see uh, I've probably raised, I opened up 10 jack uh, suited from the high jack and I flop top pair medium kicker uh, into two people I make a standard C bet and uh, we take down the pot now uh, I'm uh, going to include as much as possible what if scenarios so in this case let's say I make the C bet here I make a substantial well it's a pretty standard C bet of 150 let's say we get raised here this is often a difficult spot when you do get raised here um, if I if I get raised here I'll probably be uh, it's gonna be a difficult spot I probably will call a single race and um, fall to any further aggression on uh, the turn or the river. Reasoning is that with 10 jack, what are you really going to hope for if you get raised on this flop? The best you can hope for is that the guy is on either a pure bluff or he has a flush throw. I do not beat that many uh, 10x combinations, uh, maybe 9, 10, and a10, although I don't think A10 is very much in their uh, raising uh, in in their calling range pre-flop. So if I do get raised here, I'm not at all happy, and it wouldn't be a major mistake to uh, fold your hand versus a raise here. If you get raised here, I, I put their range on a strong 10x, maybe uh, jacks, um, pocket five, pocket deuces, or. Uh, something like ace queen with uh, the flush draw or a naked flush draw with like let's say for instance uh, f six seven uh, of uh, clubs so if you put that range into poker stove your 10 jack is uh, yeah completely crushed um, so it wouldn't be a major mistake here to fold instantly after uh, they raise uh, your c bet there so uh, when they both fall there, I'm pretty happy with that result. This video is uh, the video is actually 50 minutes long. I don't think we will ever get to 50 minutes. Uh, uh, I don't think we can do the entire video uh, review in one uh, video. So uh, maybe it may uh, might be two parts. Uh, we'll see uh, how things develop. I really want to get into detail and put myself into difficult spots as in what if situations here on table number oh, oh let's uh, pause the video for a minute here on table number uh, three uh, the cutoff probably s is stealing is raising uh, a little bit of two and a half x and a short uh, uh, a guy with half a stack insta shoves here uh, I'm in the big blind with pocket jacks when people insta shove, he's not really short, he does have 50 big blinds. Um, one people shove here, um, putting them on a range of something like ace, king, some entire bogus hands. I, I'm wondering if I have stats on the guy. Um, I will maybe pop that, maybe that will pop up if I uh, continue the video. Uh, I don't put them as much on aces or kings because they want to get value uh, with their aces or kings and they would rather make a smaller 3 bet. So I'm putting their range rather on something like ace, king, smaller pocket pairs which are afraid to see a flop, um, sometimes aces and kings but not a lot. I wouldn't give them uh, all the combinations of aces and kings and versus and versus that range, uh, we're doing fine with pocket jacks here. Now we can consider calling here uh, or for uh, or shipping it. Then 
I actually, well, calling seems pretty, calling seems really strong there, so I like shipping there and hopefully get uh, the button in there with uh, some of his weaker range. I think if we call here, uh, we look way stronger than if we ship ourselves. I don't know, I don't remember exactly what I'm doing here. Um, I think if we call here we really look really strong. If we ship it looks more or less like we have ace-king. Uh, I do ship here uh, which is fine and we're up against pocket 3 so my read on the guy was uh, fairly good. Uh, unfortunately we get sucked down on, on the river and we lose versus a uh, pocket pair. So, but I was happy with my read there. I didn't during the play. I didn't even think about it as long. Okay, on table number four, we have an interesting situation. I raised, I just uh, left the video. Uh, we raised Ace Nine offsuit from the button, and I remember this. There is a guy Tark on table number two and table number four. Uh, Tark six 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 and I will check his stats in a minute during the video I believe so he's on both tables he's on my left and his stats seem reasonable uh, well they're actually really good 22 19 uh, but I do remember that I checked his stats and they he was like 3 betting a lot I think it was close to 20 percent and whenever you are yeah, for, look, I'm I'm checking his stats right there. Uh, they just popped out. Let me just go back there because I'm checking his stats because the very next hand I have four queens suited in the cutoff, which is normally a hand that I would open if the button is a tighter player. But now that now that we have a very three bet happy guy on my left, I'm less inclined to open a hand like four queens suited um, from the Okay, let's pause it. He three bets 15% of the time, which is quite a lot for uh, the six max, which is quite a lot for 25 and all six max. So I really don't like the situation where at both tables I have a guy who three bets really often on my left, and I and I will adapt to this. And the way I adapt to this is very easily. I uh, I instantly I, I leave the tables. Um, I don't want to get into wars with capable guys uh, who have position on me. On table number three, uh, I make a call on the button with a stand suited, fairly standard. Um, um, the hand is way too. I don't want to three bet here. It's uh, the hand is a place too well to three bet, in the sense that if I do three bet, I'm gonna fall out all wars ace axis. Um, and keep all better ace axis in his uh, in his range. So I like calling there and playing the hand um, for value uh, in position. On table number two, I raise nine ten suited uh, from under the gun. Kind of loses, but uh, and um, as you can see, the guy on my left uh, three bets me again, um, which yeah uh, confirms his stats. That he is three bet happy, and um, that this is a really awkward situation to be in there. And even though it is 25 and now, and uh, I probably can, well, I can probably squeeze out a little bit of profit versus that guy. Okay, now the situation changes uh, since the guy three bets quite a bit, so his range can be fairly wide. And a guy who I have no stats on, five hands, cold calls, uh, a three bet tear. Uh, I have to call 150 into um, five, no, uh, into a 550 dollar pot. Uh, so I'm getting nice odds with a hand that plays well, multi way, nine times suited. So I don't mind a the call there um, and see what happens. As you can see, I'm looking for other tables because I will. Uh, switch out uh, tables number two and four just because of uh, the guy on my left and I will re I say this often in my videos but please when you play at the micros you have the comfort of playing versus weaker players and playing at good tables and please when you start off a session and you see 
and and you you're scanning the tables leave the tables which just which aren't which aren't good uh, there are plenty of videos on grinder school which talk about table selection please uh, take a look at them and definitely when playing the micro sticks just switch to tables which uh, are uh, going to be a uh, plus EV instead of trying to battle someone who is capable and has position on you For instance, here with the 910 off, oh, okay, 910 offsuit on table number four. Uh, I, sometimes I would steal that. Let's say everybody followed here on table number four, and I have 910 offsuit uh, here in the small blind. Versus this big blind, I will never steal. The guy is way too aggressive. He's going to defend his big blind way too often. But let's say uh, this guy, on, I'm talking about table number four, the guy with the monkey avatar. I can't pronounce that name. Uh, was sitting in a big blind, and I have nine ten offsuit. I would steal because this guy is probably going to fold his big blind so often. It's going to be immediately profitable to steal there. Here on table number three, I'm scanning. Uh, I'm checking his stats. How many often he folds to three bets because I am on the button. I have eight nine offsuit, which isn't a great hand, but I also don't really like to fold. This is a hand that I would three bet. Uh, not all the time, but against the right people, I will three bet. Here, this guy folds two out of three. Uh, I decide to uh, fold it, probably due because of the very needy nature of the guy. Eleven nine after more than 100 hands I think or is it 10 hands I can't see it's blocked by the table um, when he opens he's gonna be fairly tight so I didn't wanna 3 bet him uh, ace deuce this is another hand uh, which is okay to be 3 betting versus that guy uh, I don't think in this video I'll, uh, I'm 3, uh, three betting a lot uh, probably should have to, um, been 3 betting more. I fold these two suited again there. Uh, those were definitely two situations where you can 3 bet. You don't have to. Uh, I didn't do it because the guy is 11 9, uh, which is really tight. Uh, so he's opening up only a very strong range. So uh, I decide uh, to believe him. On table number one, I do miss, uh, decide to make a 3 bet. A guy playing 25, 17, 12 hands makes a min raise. 7, 9, I really don't like to fold here um, because it's only a min raise. Uh, I'm getting a nice odds pre flop, but 7, 9 suited uh, uh, is, a, is a hand that I don't like to fold, but calling isn't the best solution either because I can't really play my hand for value. Uh, versus uh, just calls also. I make a 3 bet there and it plays quite easy uh, post flop 7 9 suited. Okay, and we take it down on table number 1. On table number 3, we're raising ace queen suited. And we take it down. Jack 8 suited. Uh, I fold it, which is fine uh, under the gun. Table number 3. Ace king suited on table number 1. We have a min raise from a very loose guy. Twitched uh, 62 23. We have a call from a guy who folded previously. This is a hand I will definitely 3 bet for value. I will make it even 5x because ace x type of hands play hard post flop, so I don't mind them falling. Uh, and just call Saul. Well, you really want with this ace king type of hands, you really want to build a pot pre flop. You want to punish them uh, if they do decide to call with their small pocket pairs. On table number three, we have 10 jack. I would fold that versus a guy out of position. It's off suits uh, on table number three. Oh, and I paused the video there for a minute, but the king's hand... I think I just lost my connection here for a minute. Let me pause the video. And we're back. Is 8 suited under the gun on table number 2 was a fault. <clears throat> I'm praying fairly 
tight uh, in this uh, in this game, uh, which is okay. 25 and all, you don't have to be uh, you don't have to go uh, crazy on there. As you can see, I already checked the sit out the next big blind on table number four, just because of the guy on my left. I remember doing this also on table number uh, two. Let's uh, quickly go over the tables while there is no action running. Table number one, we have a guy playing on his laptop or iPad, whatever. Um, on his iPad, probably. Uh, so that's definitely uh, Rafael Lowe is a guy I would like to play against. I'll probably tag him green. I do. On table number two, uh, we're. Uh, uh, we have a nice guy, I believe, on our immediate right. Um, the disadvantage, we have a really difficult guy on our immediate left. On table number three, a uh, fairly bad table. Uh, if, I'm, if, I, uh, if I wasn't probably recording, I would also switch out table number three because I don't see an instant uh, donkey. Table number four, we have jacks. I'm definitely raising this for value versus the guy who, yeah, who may raise pretty flop. It's a standard three bet uh, for value. On table number um, two, we get three bet now by a guy um, in the small blind. Nine queen suited is uh, is going to be a fault. Um, and I remember while I was playing that I do get three bet quite off. Uh, the tables were quite; they were not the best tables. People were playing quite well. Uh, I was trying to focus on the bad, uh, bad players, as you should always do, and I kind of changed my strategy in that I, uh, that I was going to uh, min open uh, with all my hands, just to um, compensate for all the people who kept on 3-betting me. Ten queen suited table number two, kind of a loose open, but it's okay. Uh, when you are more experienced, you can definitely open um, more hands. And ten queen suited is uh, one of those hands that uh, you will open. Flop comes ace five seven, pretty dry flop. Uh, if it was any more connected, let's say it was five seven eight, I would never see that. That, uh, but now with an ace high, I have, I have no showdown. Uh, I, I have queen high, I have no showdown um, value. So I decide to see bet there and hopefully just take it down. Hopefully they he was on pocket sixes and he has something like queen jack and uh, they both fold, which would be an excellent result. So it's a typical spot where I always see bet once and be done with it. We get called in one spot and uh, I decide to uh, give up there. As you can see, I'm switching out table number uh, one. On table number um, four, I raised and got two calls from the blinds. I got dunk bet in two. I do have a gut shot uh, and a back door. Uh, the pot is four fifth four thirty, uh, and I have to call one dollar uh, seven cents. If I do hit my gut shot, it's gonna be pretty disguised. Um, so I do think that I'm, I have to get like one into ten. I do think I can squeeze out another. More value on the turn and the river if I do get my uh, gut shot to make this minus EV call plus EV on later streets. So I don't mind calling there with the equity that I have. 
and the odds that are given to me. Now it gets checked through, which is a nice result. I get a free card, and uh, we miss our open under uh, straight draw. And we just fold when uh, that guy bets three dollars into uh, when the needy guy bets into two people, uh, quite substantial. Actually, it's interesting to see how they played it. Uh, let's pause it the video. This guy has kings. He didn't three bet pre flop uh, from the small blind. And this guy has six eight suited, which is kind of. Um, let me take a quick look because I might have just. No, yeah. Okay, so. Okay, so. It's something I didn't notice while I was playing. Probably should have noticed it. That the other guy uh, just called with kings and then dunked on the flop and this guy actually called with 6-8 suited which isn't the strongest hand Probably should have made a note on uh, both of those players. King Jack on table number one is going to be a standard race from the hijack, especially with a weaker guy and a small blind. If I do get 3 bet by any of the cutoff or uh, button, I'm insta falling. We do, uh, there is a call from the, oh, there's both calls. And we get dunked into full pot by the weaker guy. So this is an insta fold on table number one. Not even thinking about it. Uh, I have no equity in that pot whatsoever. Or pretty much no equity. Uh, I do have two over cards, but. Ace do suited again. I do not three bet in this video. I don't think I three bet uh, a whole lot. Um, probably should have three bet a lot more, but um, sometimes I uh, just like to uh, switch it up. The ace queen suited. Uh, on table number one, uh, probably uh, uh, this is a three bet for value. I've three betted that guy before. Uh, he folded before. Ace Queen suited is a really strong hand. I don't mind him falling. Um, I don't mind him calling either. I have a strong hand, so uh, that was a three bet for value. On table number three, I get three bet again after I opened. Um, I, as you can see on table number two, I'm already adjusting by m making my steals smaller. I uh, was kind of tired of getting a uh, three bet, and I wanted to see whether it makes any difference uh, whether I make a, whether people would three bet smaller or three bet equal size, uh, whether I make it two x or three x uh, pre flop. On table number uh, two, I min raised ace four from a cutoff. We flop top to pair, so this is going to be a bad, bad, bad. We get called, and yeah, pretty much a blank comes on the turn. Unless he has ace queen. Uh, if he has ace queen, I'm still stacking off there, by the way. Uh, if he raises me, depending on the size of his race, uh, I will either. I will either ship or uh, call. If he makes like a tiny re raise here on the turn, uh, I probably call. If he makes any bigger, I probably ship.
on table number four that's a standard submining situation and we miss also notice that I switched table number four and I um, was really happy to see that a guy on my right now has 8850 now which is a 10 times more plus EV situation than the first table I was on on position uh, than the first table I was on where this guy was uh, three banning me all the time and there were no real weak players on the table now I have position on a player who is just horrendous playing 90% of his hands Nine three offsuit and five jack offsuit are all just crappy hands. We can fault them. We see that the weaker guy on table number four is limping in, which is a really nice sign. Oh, I'm actually also switching out table number three which I'm happy about, yes, because I didn't like the table, I didn't remember I was switching out that table uh, I had some other tables on the side, so uh, why not switch them out? I really, this is where it's just so profitable to be playing against the weaker players okay, so on table number 4, the weaker, the weaker guy opens up uh, 3x, I have king, queen uh, I don't want a 3 bet there with King Queen uh, off suits. Uh, he plays a well post flop. Uh, I also don't want him falling out all his crap. So uh, I have position versus him. I would uh, never 3 bet there. With the Ace Queen suited here on table number 1, uh, I'm checking the stats of the people there. Um, I don't really. I, I want to keep the guy in green in the pot. That's for sure. I really want. I don't want to push him out of the pot, so I don't mind calling. Also, I'm out of position, and Ace Queen suited doesn't play really well. Uh, if I do three bet here, let's say I three bet here, I would three bet quite big because I don't mind them falling. And if anybody of them shoves, uh, I can easily f uh, fold. Um, also, I have a very strong. A big pair type of hand so you want to build the pot pre-flop um, you don't want to make it like sometimes with aces you can make it like two dollars uh, just to kind of lure, 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 lure I don't know lure them in uh, but with ace queen uh, so that, that really that hand needs to hit before you can continue uh, so I would make it like with ace queen so that I would make it like 250 and with aces I would make it two dollars I decide to call and keep the guy in green uh, in the pot. On table number four, we flop a gut shot, but uh, it's nothing uh, more to talk about. I just fold when uh, there's also two other people involved in the pot. Queen 4 offsuit, 9 6 offsuit, and Jack 3 suited are all easily fallable. I do have to admit that I do not play 6 max uh, cash games uh, that often anymore. Uh, um, I really am into um, heads up, sit and goes uh, right now. I really like them, things are going well. I do plan to make a few short videos on that. If I uh, if I find the time, things are quite hectic uh, at work. I remember that uh, this recording was made in my Eastern holidays. Okay, so I adapted here on table number three by min raising. I was kind of.
getting tired to uh, of getting three bets. Uh, also, I wanted to see if people adjust their race sizing. Again, uh, on table number three, a weaker guy, probably a weaker guy, because I say this because he's uh, has like sixteen dollars uh, in his stats, makes a huge three bet. I just decide to fold his jack suited there. Oh, and I also see that uh, a very quite a famous guy at these stakes irons for the win I mean I whenever I play I see him at the tables um, on table number three on my left he's known to be three I know him uh, he three bets quite a bit and he three bets a lot of crap too so um, since I got a decent read on him I didn't uh, I decided to stay on that table Okay, um, <laughs> interesting hand here on table number three. I think I raised, let me check how it went. I think I raised, he called pre flop. I flop, oh no, he raised, I'm in the big blind. Okay, he raised pre flop. I have 10 king. We flop middle pair with a gut shot, I think. Come on. Uh, he checks back the flop on this 9 10 jack. Um, when he checks back this flop, uh, I don't think he ever has jack X. Um, I don't think he ever has a flush draw. Uh, so I probably have the best hand here. Uh, so I'm betting. Uh, I'm betting for value there. But when I get min raised, ha. Oh, well, a min raise isn't that amazing. Of course, any eight beats me now. Um, either that or he flopped a complete nuts with something like King Queen. Um, although I think King Queen would even see that. Ah, uh, actually, I don't, I don't. I wouldn't mind making a call there. But he definitely has uh, eights in his range. But I think a and eight would also see that with an open ender. Um, I decide to fold. Mm, don't really. That was kind of nitty colossal. Uh, that fold was nitty. Don't like that uh, fold very much. On the other hand, I didn't have much. Um, how to say? I didn't have much. Uh, EV in that hand in the sense that I have middle pair but I didn't have a lot of outs to improve King 5 on table number 3 is a min race and Jack King uh, I ice raised the weaker guy on table number 4 I do get 3 bet by the, of course the guy I know he's 3 betting light so I decide to make a call here with king 5 suited and planning to and plan oh sorry that's my phone and planning to play back at him post flop because I know he's just 3 betting a very wide range that's the reason why I call there with king 5 uh, suited and you can flop a decent hand king 5 suited of course on that flop ah don't really don't really. He's gonna continue. He can continue with so many hands that I do not want to play back at on that monotone uh, board. On table number four, uh, I iso raised the weaker guy with Jack King, and we flop top pair top kicker. Okay, and he dunks out into us. Let's talk about this for a minute. Uh, we call. Uh, I don't see much point in raising if we. I, if I raise here. Hmm. If I raise here, I'm gonna fall out all his bluffs. I'm also falling out all his probably 9x type of hands, 7x type of hands. I am charging, however, his flush draws. Um, mm. I'm also charging his straight draws. So actually, I wouldn't have minded a raise there. Hmm, interesting. 
uh, I do have top air top kicker so if he re-raises me I'm not completely happy getting it in there uh, 100 big blinds deep uh, I'm kind of torn in between whether I, whether I want to charge him and play a big pot with like top pair medium kicker on a very drawy board no I actually like the call here um, there's too many hands that can go and, and shove over me like drawing hands which are still beats but have a huge amount of equity versus me so I don't mind the call there okay let's keep the pot small let's keep the famous rule of Sp um, small hands, small pots, and King Jack on that kind of board isn't a very huge hand. A blank comes on the turn, unless he has 6 8. Um, but that's like a really small percentage of his range, a really tiny percentage of its range. And he bets into me again with top pair, medium kicker versus a guy playing 65% of the hands. I don't see myself falling there. So I'm making another call. And not the best card comes off because now any 6x beats me. Uh, but if he had. Uh, Uh, let me take a look here. Five, eight, nine. Depending on uh, his bet, I uh, will decide whether to call or fold. Also, keep in mind he's playing 65% of his hands. He makes a pretty substantial bet. Okay, we have to uh, really analyze this. Um, I haven't shown much strength in this hand, and that's. That's a good thing, uh, because this keeps his bluffing range open. Um, all flush draws missed. Like the only hand that I'm afraid of um, is something like 6x, which got there. But that's like a really tiny percentage of the range. I can see a lot of 9x in his range, uh, which now is like, pff, I don't know. And the guy is playing 65%, he's limping in. He can have anything. Uh, I, my initial plan was just to call down and let him bluff off his entire stack, keep his range wide open. He can have any king, king axe too. Um, he can have missed flush draws. Um, at this point, you have to make uh, an assessment for yourself. I have to be correct here, like some quick 30% of the time. Mm -hmm. And I definitely think that I'm good here 30% of the time. Uh, he dunked into me and it wasn't a huge dunk. Um, if he had something like 2 pair, King king 9 or 7 9, uh, he would have dunked uh, much bigger in my opinion. Uh, now he's really trying to wrap like 6x and I just don't see many so how many six axes are dunking here uh, on the on the flop? Uh, if it if he had six eight, but the river is actually a good card since it decreases the amounts the combinations of six eights uh, he can have. Um, the guy was playing so erratic. If the guy was any more capable, I probably fold here. But the guy was playing like almost every single hand. Uh, I, I didn't show any strength whatsoever. I played my hand like I was drawing. Uh, it's not an easy decision, not by a long shot. Uh, but I have to be correct here 30% of the time, and I do believe I am. Um, he showed up with something weird, uh, pocket jacks. Um, don't understand his limp preflop, don't understand his call, but okay. Uh, I went with my. I went. God damn it! I went with my read there. Uh, I, you can say I got lucky that I was correct. Um, I only have to be correct 30% of the time. Sometimes I will lose that, and he will show up with something like some random six x. But um, that's okay. Oh, 
going I'm probably going to analyze the hand uh, off screen after I played it. Very next hand we have 8-5 suit versus that same guy. We're in the big blind. He even raised pre-flop um, from the small blind. I'm definitely defending against the guy. Uh, so yeah, so uh, spazzy. Uh, we flop. Okay, we flop a flush draw. There's no reason to raise this guy. This guy is bluffing his stack away. If I hit my flush draw, he's gonna pay me off. Uh, he just, uh, if I, if I hit my flush draw here on the turn, I will I will rarely raise there because I feel like the guy is just turning decent hands into complete bluffs. By the way, I didn't expect jacks at all there uh, in the previous hand. I still I I have the I have enough equity here in the pot to still make a call here. I only have to be I instantly I'm now getting one into three, and with the money I'm going to get on the river if I do hit. Uh, that's definitely a call here on table number four. Unfortunately, we miss and we're just gonna uh, give up versus that guy. Let's say it was a six of spades who comes off. He bets definitely um, raising it up, and I might even ship all in versus that guy because I believe this guy is just so spazzy that he he doesn't even have to call me that often to make it profitable uh, I probably ship all in uh, just to make him annoyed and just let him call by because of his emotions but of course now uh, with 8 high I'm not gonna make the call the video been going no we can still um, definitely uh, continue this I believe we get a pretty awkward run now of hands that uh, don't do a lot there's an interesting hand on table number two which I'm looking at uh, going on this is a really tiny bet He does get the fold. Yeah. Interesting. The guy is playing 6 3, so he's never bluffing there, in, uh, in my opinion. People playing 7 5 after 40 hands, there's. Yeah, I mean, something to say about. King 7 suited, again, same uh, comment as previous, against uh, an idiot guy I would definitely steal with King 7 suited, small blind versus big blind, but against this guy who is capable and who is 3-bet happy, it's just a fault. All these poker games are just about adapting to your table. How many different strategies I have for heads up, sit and goes is, I have a standard starting game. But my starting game is never ever the same as my ending game and um, sometimes I will 3-bet a lot, sometimes I will never 3-bet uh, just depending on my opponent, you just adjust so often in heads up, sit and goes you play so many different styles versus uh, different people um, which makes the games uh, really interesting Set mining on table number two, uh, we miss, uh, we just fold. On table number three, we get three bet, uh, on table number four, sorry, we get three bet after I min open, ten queen off suit, so we still get to, and on table number three, we also get three bet again by this. Eins for the win guy, okay. 
uh, this time we flop uh, basically a gut shot uh, and nothing more uh, I called this 3 bet it was not a huge 3 bet I have a stand off suit and I know he's doing this with a lot of bad hands uh, also um, basically I should be leaving the table on table number 3 too um, this is not the guy uh, you want to have on your left um, and I'm just gonna have to fold uh, a stand here versus such a big uh, c-bet so you, you, you see how difficult it is to play versus the guy on your left who is always 3-betting uh, to you obviously you should do the same to your opponents but keep in mind do it against opponents like me who will fall to your 3-bets or who or who are needy and uh, fall to your uh, c-bets or your 3-bets uh, don't do it versus a guy like on table number 4 hours just play normal style versus that guy table number 1 I guess we are going to set mine don't know if I like the set mine on table number one um, because I, I would I would first check how many uh, how often these guys are going to squeeze here because this is an ideal squeeze situation on table one for the uh, for the people in the blinds and I seem capable so I don't mind it a, a three bet there uh, with the sixes preflop we flop a set that's great Flop is quite drawy. Uh, I'm just basically hoping he has something like uh, pocket tens, pocket jacks, who is not going to fold versus a raise on a very drawy board. Um, so I make a raise there, not slow playing. Unfortunately, uh, our opponent uh, folds. I'm gonna s uh, stop pausing the video uh, so often, just. Uh, because there's quite some footage, footage, footage left. Is queen suited? I make a min raise because of the constant three betting of uh, of my opponents on a four four uh, jack flop. Um, bah. I don't know if I really like the c-bet because I might have the best hand there with ace-queen and it's never folding any pocket pair uh, like pocket 5s, pocket 6s, pocket 7s is not folding mm. keep in mind though that I make a c-bet, I, I was going to barrel let me check if I had some barreling, yeah I was going to barrel any spades, I would have barreled any a, yeah any, well of course an ace uh, I would barrel any spade, any king, and any ten. Those are hands. Uh, because if he only calls there, probably has something like pocket sevens, uh, pocket sixes, pocket sevens, pocket eights, uh, something like this, and uh, might actually fold uh, the best hand. So those were some uh, double barreling opportunities, but. Um, Blank came off, and I decided to not to uh, to, to, to not barrel. The A stand a min raise from the button on table number four. Flop middle pair, top kicker. Um, I check this back for deception value. I'm never falling. I doubt that if I make a C bet, that I will ever get called by anything worse. Um, now I might get a call by something like 9 10, Queen Jack, which might have actually fallen to a first C bet. But uh, he decides to uh, insta fold. When people check flops to you and check turns to you, um, 
after it goes on the flop, check, check, and they check the turn to you, then you basically have a free card to uh, bet anything and they will fold. If people check the flop to you and um, if, let me rephrase this. If people check the flop uh, in position and you bet on the turn and they raise you on the on the turn that's uh, that's a monster that's typically the bad players monster type of hands uh, good players will still see that because uh, you would see that with your air too so you have to see that with your monsters too the bad players will not they will in position check the flop to you if they hit a set and then they see you betting on the on, on the turn and they raise you uh, Basically, you can fold any of your uh, any of your any of your pairs. I'm fair, playing fairly nitty here, uh, folding nine ten pseudo tear on table number one. I had some other tables on the side, so. But that's not really an excuse. I should have uh, played a little bit more aggressive, but uh, things were f going fine. You with the pocket nines. I didn't uh, three, want to three bet. I want to get. Uh, I want to get it uh, three way uh, with a guy who just uh, limped in. Sets are uh, goal at uh, these stakes. So what happens here on table number? Okay, so let's take a go back here on table number four because a huge hand played out. And always analyze the hands of your opponents, especially during the game, so you can profit from it uh, in a later situation. So, what happens is it's our good friend on the button. An under the gun raise, a call, flop comes 10, jack 6, pot is 177, that's a tiny bet. Um, this is never a bet from something really awesome. Uh, by it's a poker bluff. Um, I, I haven't seen the results yet, but I, I would assume that if you have something like ace jack, you would bet bigger on that board. Uh, if you had 10 jack, you would bet bigger. Um, you you make that c bet there with something like uh, king queen uh, with ace queen uh, with ten queen uh, something like this uh, you would make that c bet but never with something like pocket sixes uh, ten jack ace jack uh, pocket tens pocket jacks uh, pocket aces pocket kings. So now he checks back this flop, um, and it goes check check. And then this guy, how did the pot get so big? He maybe pots it to forty. And this other guy raises to five. I mean, ours either has an ace or he's bluffing here. Uh. And it's a poker prof raises so that's definitely an ace. And Aura's ships all in. And wow. Okay. Um, Aura's is, yeah, I'm uh, sorry, he's a big fish. I mean, if you re -ra get re raised and you ship all in there with like an obvious, when the most obvious trade is there, you're just, you're just not paying attention to poker. 
uh, this guy is then my read was correct that his c bet was too small to be a strong hand there and he indeed flopped a middle pair uh, top kicker and he was making like a c bet to see what the next card is and maybe hoping to get a fault so very straightforward play by Isopogobrov his hand was so obvious to read and then all was just yeah he's just pushing buttons um, I mean that was just that was just insane to shove there it was even insane to race uh, on the river the first time but, uh, let, let alone shove there after a re-race and it's a poker broth typically played his hand like very typical. His seabed was too small to be to be anything of a strong hand. It was like, oh, look at me! I have a mediocre hand. I want to see if I can get a fault, or I want to see the next card. Always now ships all in after a simple seabed on a three-two threes flop. I think he is pretty tilted, which is his own fault. What happened on table number? Um, okay, on table number uh, three, there's nothing much I think I to, to talk about. I just call on the river there with uh, Jack High of Spades. Uh, I'm gonna continue the video. Uh, we still have quite a, a bit of footage left. Uh, Jack Queen suited. It's a hand that plays well multi-way. Uh, I don't want to three bet it and turn it into a bluff. So it's fine to make the call there on table number three. Flop comes a seven nine. Basically, if you see bets, I'm done with the hand. Do you never raise there? Yes, I do often raise there, and if I raise there, I even even my uh, bluff uh, barrel off uh, any uh, club that comes off or any 10 that comes off um, if I raise there any calls is you can easily put this range on ace x um, so I don't know if I would barrel another street there uh, I would nail yeah uh, I don't think I would barrel another street if he calls there. Just because the board was so dry, the only hand he can call with, continue with, is his X if I raise on the flop. And he's not falling that on the turn either. I'm in the race Jack 8 suited on table number 4. From under the gun, loose, but the bad guy is in the big blind. Unfortunately, he falls. Okay, I'm pretty. Uh, I think the video has been uh, going on for quite a bit now. Um, maybe a few more hands. Jack King off suit on table number four. We get a call from small blind. I'm definitely raising this up for value versus uh, this typical uh, fish. I would have made it 1x. Why don't I make it bigger there? I should have made it $1 instead of 75 cents. Um, we flop middle pair. Decent kick here. He dogs into us. Uh, I'm not falling here. Don't see either much value in raising. It's pretty much the same situation as before. Um, I just, just want to keep in all his bluffs. Now we still have middle pair and we have an added equity of our straights if, uh, if we need it. The queen reinforces my fault that he doesn't have a queen and he insta ships. Okay, so this is again some either he has queen x or he is on, on, on a complete bluff that's basically it uh, 
I don't believe he has a lot of queen axes in his range. His c bet was his bet on the flop was really small. Another queen came on the river. Uh, I mean, I only have to be correct like 30% of the time. Uh, for me, this is a call, especially with all the stuff we've seen from this guy. Uh, I stand by. Uh, I'm making a call there. What, what, what do you think? I his range is. Let's uh, quickly think. Uh, there's definitely weaker jack axes in his range. Um, keep in mind also that I beat uh, Jack Tan if he has this. Um, he has weaker jack axes. Very rarely he's gonna have queen axe. He's gonna have a lot of like uh, maybe some nine ten uh, which missed. Uh, bluffs. Uh, I'm doing fairly well against that range. Um, I'm doing really well against that range. So this, and I only have to be correct 30% of the time. So that makes it a call for me. Also, he insta insta shoved on the river. He didn't think about it when the next queen. Somebody, when the board pairs like this usually people think about what am I going to do if he has a queen uh, or if he doesn't have the queen I mean this looked to me like yeah I mean like I don't know complete air because you have at least have to think about the river card he didn't he just needs the shaft and he actually shows up with a wicked jack and I uh, scooped the pots okay I think the video uh, has been going on for quite a bit now. Uh, take take home messages. Please switch out tables. Look at how, how much money I won on table number four. Just because I switched it out with a table where a guy was sitting on my left and was always three betting, I switched it out and I had the luck sitting uh, on the left of a guy who is just plain bad. Uh, I'm just sad I didn't get all his money and that a lot of his money went to this guy here, but that's fine. Uh, I should have done this with all the other tables too. I did it for table 2 and 3, but the tables I switched them out for weren't perfect either. So that's definitely one take home uh, message. Another one is you don't have to be super duper aggressive to make a profit here uh, at these 25 and all 6 nice uh, games. Um, I didn't three bet a whole lot. I should have three bet a little bit more. I made one or two mistakes, I believe, uh, in uh, my uh, in my own play here. Uh, but um, in general, I'm pretty satisfied uh, about how things turned out. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed my video. Uh, it's also a good training exercise for yourself if you have the software. Just record one of your sessions and uh, go uh, look at it, look at it um, afterwards and see if you could have uh, implement some what if situations and think about uh, the plays that you made and whether um, whether you could have made a more plus EV way and put a range on your opponent and see if uh, the hand that he showed up with was actually accounted for in the range that you uh, gave him. Okay, this was Colossus for Grinder School. Hope you enjoyed this, and I'll see you guys in the forums.